Good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing this fine day? Hopefully you caught up to this video and figured out where it's at because I'm uh, changing channels again. Uh, I need to split off an old account so that someone else can manage it. And to do so, it means I have to move mine to a different email address. So uh, I'm in the process of doing that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be moving all my videos over to here that I've done in the past uh, systematically. And also I'm going to be uh, uh, moving uh, all the current stuff over to this channel. Uh, so hopefully you found my link and that uh, you are able to find me. So let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for this time we get to look into your word and praise you and thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and uh, in helping me to see uh, what you have for me to do in these final days as we wait for your soon return, Lord. We pray, give you praise and thanks in everything you do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So we're continuing from yesterday. Uh, we had left off. We're in chapter uh, 19. We left off at, at verse 22. And so we're going to finish up the rest of the chapter today. So I just called this one uh, day two of righteous actions, holy in character. And this is the display we were using. That's up in this right corner here. We left off talking about the difference between forgiveness, forgiveness, divine forgiveness versus human forgiveness. Now we're starting into a section that's talking about uh, uh, some other different things that we have to pay attention to that uh, the uh, Israelites. And again, uh, these a lot of these have been changed in the New Testament when Jesus Christ fulfilled a lot of these. Some of these were symbolic of Jesus Christ, and so uh, they were changed in the New Testament. But it also tells us a little bit about the character of God. So I don't uh, I don't downplay them. Uh, I don't necessarily see that. We have to be as strict, we don't have to abide by them as strictly as they did, because some of the reasons behind God choosing these ones for them was based on the fact of the area they lived in. So I'll try to point that as, out as we go along here in Leviticus. So this is basically what they call the old law, but I think it also shows us the character of God. And so that uh, it's our schoolmaster, it shows us why we are sinners as a uh, is the best way of putting it so verses and i want you to always know whenever i'm studying this stuff i uh, i am learning also and it uh, uh a lot of this stuff is fairly new to me too so uh, uh most of the stuff applies to me too <laughs> I just learn about it a little bit sooner than I'm showing you. Okay, picking up at verse 23. And when you shall come into the land, and that's again the land. Uh, this is remember this is we're still at the bottom of Mount Sinai, and uh, this is Moses getting instructions from God about certain uh, things, and we've been seeing all the different uh, sacrifices they have to do. But he says, when you come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then you shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be uncircumcised unto you, it shall not be eaten of. I think that's kind of speaking to, I'm not, I'm not really up on this, but I know it takes a few years before the fruit of a tree is actually edible. So that might be what we're talking about here. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord with it, with all. And in the fifth year shall you eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. This is also a, a kind of a way of uh, of how we give we give back to the Lord too, because talking about uh, it's also kind of re reflects on giving our our first. So the fourth year that all belongs to the Lord. Uh, so even though it's probably edible the fourth year, that's the Lord's. And then the fifth year that we can take our portion. And from then on, it's that whole idea of giving our best, our first uh, to the Lord. And, uh, and, we, and it reflects on the fact that Jesus Christ is the first fruits of all those that are going to get saved or have eternal life. And some verses on this in Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. 
Honor the Lord with all thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. I have learned that ever since I became a cheerful giver and not thinking about, uh, I like the, the terminology of don't, don't pay attention uh, what, hand, when, uh, what the right hand is doing uh, to, and the, to the left hand. It means, in other words, don't pay attention, don't be concerned uh, about what you give. Uh, give it no second thought. You cannot outgive God. God will uh, always be there to uh, supply our needs. But don't think it's a, it's a like a contract either. Uh, like if I give a certain amount, then God's going to give it back to me. No, it don't work that way. Uh, you just got to give and and with faith, but uh, believe that the Lord is going to uh, supply your every need. Okay, moving on to verses twenty six through twenty eight. You shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use enchantment nor observe times. Those last two things are talking about uh, the magic and uh, and different things along that na nature. Uh, wizardry, uh, necromancy, uh, necromancy. That's uh, thinking you'll be able to, to speak to the dead through like a medium or something like that. Those are all against God's commandments. And you should not eat anything with the blood. It means that... Uh, the blood itself should be drained out of the animal, uh, and, and for most of us it is when we buy it in a meat market. It's already been done. Uh, but that uh, if you are killing uh, a live animal, they make sure you drain all the blood out first. Verse 27. Shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. This has to do with uh, shaving and uh, doing certain superstitions when it came to your, the hair of your head. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. That last one, I'll try to explain it a little bit. Uh, so I got a little uh, thing here on this particular thing. There are six commandments here that condemn the practices and superstitions of the heathen. They were not to eat flesh with the blood in it. They were not to trim their hair and leave little tufts of it. And they were not to act like the heathen when a loved one dies, which is not a tattoo in the general sense. What they would do is they cut themselves. Uh, cuttings in the flesh for the dead. The reference here is to the practice of making deep gashes in the skin while mourning the death of a relative. This was done to provide life lifeblood for the spirit of the dead person rather than to express sorrow. And another thing that's common about it is that you probably heard different things about tattoos. And I know uh, uh, some people listening may uh, have them. I personally, number one, uh, don't see, I don't personally have any. I never had really a desire to get any. But I don't see that uh, uh, tattoos in themselves are a sin. But certain types can be if they're, if they're to, if for worship purposes. So tattoo indicated that was one of a slave to a particular deity. And so what they would do is that they would actually draw a tattoo of a certain god on their skin. And so that it was like showing a way of worship. This kind of leads into that whole mark of the beast thing. When we're going to, whoever's still there in the tribulation, uh, they're going to actually uh, put a tattoo of some sort on their skin to be uh, to show their loyalty to the antichrist. So that's another indication of, uh, of what this verse is talking about. And then ancient writers abound with accounts of marks made on their face, arms, etc., in honor in honor of different idols. And to this is the inspired penman alludes uh, again. So it is it is kind of referencing tattoos, but there's certain ones having to do with worship. And it had to do with the area they lived in a lot. So part of this message to us today is that what our culture thinks and how they perceive things is important. If some clothing or jewelry or body decoration would associate us with a pagan world, it should not be done. This is a difficult line to draw because the standards of culture are always changing. Some modern examples of changing standards are like hair length and earrings for men. In Paul's day in the city of Corinth, only prostitutes went around without a head covering. So it was right for the Christian women of Corinth to wear veils, though not required to by the letter of the law. Paul reflects on this in 1 Corinthians 11, 5 and 6. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is even all one as, as, as if she was shaven. 
For if a woman be not covered, let her also be shown. But if, if it be a shame for a woman to be shown or shaven, let her be covered. So in other words, that was the idea behind it, is that the, the, the women that shaved their heads or uncovered their heads in that particular area uh, were the prostitutes, and they actually write in the temple. Uh, they actually had rituals where they would uh, practice certain sexual rituals to certain gods. So that's where some of this stuff comes from. Okay, Leviticus 19.29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the lamb fall to whoredom and the lamb become full of wickedness. So this is a condemnation of a heathen, a heathen practice which prevails to this day among some people. I have read that men in this country go through college with the money their wives earn as harlots. How terrible. That was a, that was a statement uh, by... Uh, uh, Dr. McGee, but I agree with him. That there's certain countries that actually practice that. I never hear. I remember hearing one when I was in Turkey that I thought was, boy, uh, don't get in trouble. Uh, it's, let's say uh, uh, somebody was caught stealing or something, and they were put into prison. It was up to the family uh, to uh, make sure that that person was taken care of and fed. If it was a man. Because the man was considered the breadwinner of the family, it was actually the wife that had to had to go into jail uh, to uh, to do his time. Very similar idea. Uh, some of these cultures, women do not have any kind of a, uh, a standing at all. Okay, on to verse thirty. You shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. The Sabbath was a sign of the relationship between God and the children of Israel, and it was to be observed strictly. This is brought out in detail, though, in Exodus 31, uh, 13 through 17. Speak thou unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. But whosoever doeth any work therein, thy soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh and the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So again, the Sabbath, uh, the Sabbath rest was a requirement uh, that uh, didn't change in the fact that uh, we should take a day of rest and we should we should honor the Lord with our uh, with our worship uh, once a week at least. I believe we should do it uh, every ten, every chance that the doors of the church are open. And in fact, I believe in worshiping every day. Uh, I have my devotional in the morning. I I like to pray and uh, read the Bible, uh, so that. Uh, I think every day is a Sabbath day, especially when you're retired. Okay, verse 31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Whenever you see that word familiar spirits, they're talking about trying to reach the dead uh, or uh, any kind of a, uh, any kind of uh, spirit. Most spirits you try to contact, whether it be through a medium or through uh, palm reading or from, uh, uh, what's that, uh, uh, that hourglass, that clear globe thing. Uh, any of that kind of stuff is all the, the people you're actually reaching are not loved ones, trust me. Uh, has your loved ones, that uh, if they're your, wherever they're at, uh, you can't speak to them until we get to heaven. And uh, that's so that's the... the Game there. God has a strict rule about necromancy. And that's speaking to the dead. Uh, so that any spirit you think that uh, somebody might say they've talked to is most likely a demon, and the demon is going to act like their loved one to try to get to try to get them to uh, think that they're actually talking to a real their real loved one, and they're not. So this is one of the many warnings against spiritualism and demonism. The supernatural and satanic character of this practice is recognized in scripture and rejected. I've been watching this series by a uh, man that I like. Uh, uh, he talks a lot about this kind of stuff. And he's been talking about voodoo. 
Uh, if you want the link, let me know. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get it for you. Uh, but he's been talking, he'll be doing a series over the last couple of weeks on uh, voodoo. And you'll be amazed how how much voodoo is in, uh, has even crept into the church uh, and unknowingly uh, in their practices and reaching out to spirits, things like uh, uh, tarot cards and uh, Ouija boards, uh, supposedly renamed to, to make it sound like it's Christianese, as he puts it. So if that's something you're interested in knowing about, he's been uh, showing videos and stuff of uh, actual vi uh, of, uh, voodoo practices and how they correlate to even some of the uh, more modern music today. Really, really dangerous time we live in. Okay, verse 32. Thou shalt raise up before the uh, hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God, I am the Lord. This is good basic respect for the uh, for the uh, uh, for those above you, you know, one of the things I miss now that uh, they're gone is my father and my grandfather. Uh, lots of wisdom in our uh, in the men and uh, women that are above us. Uh, so much we can learn from. Uh, uh, so it's, it's it's an honor to 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 our elderly folks uh, to get as much information as possible before they pass. And that's what this verse is speaking to. Some other ones on that. First Timothy five one. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. First Peter 2.17 Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in the land, you shall not vex him either. Uh, that's what we're getting into now, verse 33 and 34. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, you shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as a one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. It's about treating people that are passing through with, with as much respect as you would your own uh, your own self. So the stranger among uh, among them was to be treated kindly and would and was to be loved. He was a reminder to them that that we were strangers in Egypt. The stranger was a neighbor. He shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, in mediard, in weight, or in measure. This also has to do with business. And we'll get into that a little bit here next. And we should be honest in our dealings in business, too. Don't try to cheat people. Uh, don't put you, if you're a butcher, don't put your thumb on the scale and try to get a little extra money out of that pound of beef. <laughs> Verse 35 and 36. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. In media yard, in weight, or in measure. Just balances, just weights, a just ephat, and a just hin shall you have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Weights, uh, in the Hebrew, it means stones. And a few verses on this in Proverbs 11.1. 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. It was being honest. Uh, when you uh, charge a certain amount for by weight, that you should be able to make sure that you're using the, a correct weight and don't cheat uh, the person. Also, Proverbs 16, 11. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. Again, same idea. Business transactions were to be honest. Measures and weights were to be honest. God's children are to be different from others because they represent God, even in their business dealings. Verse 37, last verse for today. It's going to get, we're going to get done a little early here. Therefore shall you observe all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. I am the Lord. God is the Lord. That is a reason enough for obedience to what he commands. Can you think of anything to add to that? I am the Lord. And that's all I, uh, I didn't move into the next chapter. I know I probably get done a little early today, uh, but uh we we'll just call it short today, and we will have a prayer here. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much, Lord, for these uh, these guidelines to follow, even in this day and age, that uh, we can take these teachings from the New Testament, and we get to see how we how best to, to work in our own culture today as best we can. And we give you all the praise and thanks for all the things you show us in your word, and Old Testament and New Testament alike. We thank you, and we give you praise. Be with everyone today as they uh, go about their journeys and uh, be with uh, uh, 
all those that are, are ill and need uh, need your attention. May you give them peace and comfort and healing. And all those, that, whatever their needs may be today, that you be with them and help them for whatever they need. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, so again, I'll put the link in this back to the original uh but I'll also put a uh, I put a comment on my old channel uh, to where to go. So you should be able to find this one that way also. I know I'm saying that in this video, uh, but hopefully you'll see uh, the note in the other video. So I will talk to you all again tomorrow, and we'll be in the Millennium Kingdom again. So have a great day.